Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a regularly scheduled board uh, meeting for the Select Board of Sunderland. We can call the order at 6.39. Life got in the way, so we're all a little bit late tonight. So thanks for your patience. There's particular people who have come in to participate in tonight's meeting. Uh, we're going to talk with the folks from the COG about a Sunderland uh, SEPT and Hazard Mitigation Plan, their updates. we got a building inspector and talking about online permitting. Anybody who's in the trades or understands online permitting, this can very well be a good step forward. We're going to get some select board updates and a town administrator update. We're going to be home to watch the Bruins tonight, so no too much talking. Got it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's start right off with uh, Alyssa LaRose, who's <clears throat> by far and away the best example of what the COG can do. <laughs> well, having worked with you on the, housing, you on the housing plan. It's been a while. <clears throat> it has been a while. <laughs> So we're going to talk about our uh, SEPT and Planning Committee and Hazard Mitigation Plan update. It's like both of them? Well, no, Hazard Mitigation, that's what I'm talking Your about. Your Hazard Mitigation. All right. <laughs> Members of SEPT are SEPT here, so. are here okay. and Hazard okay. Mitigation Plan update. So okay. we're all in one title. It's all to you. Okay. Well, I, I brought a few handouts. We don't have, um, you know, a lot of time, so I was just going to give a... a Kind of just an overview of what we'll be working on. We can share one. Yeah, that's cool. okay. So that's Thank you. the kind of schedule and we'll give you this one here. Um, All right. Nice. Um. So I'm Alyssa Larose. I'm a senior planner at the Franklin Regional Council of Governments, and I'll be helping um, to update your multi-hazard mitigation plan. Oh, sure. Thanks. Um, which um, it's a it's a plan that um, that um, yeah, I'm just turn this bike. Um, that was last completed. In, I think it was 2014 mm -hmm. was when yours was last adopted. Um, the planning process probably started more like 2012. So the um, the idea is that you update it every five years um, to stay current with the. Um, Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency and FEMA, um, Federal Emergency Management Agency. Um, so that's what this is about. There's a grant from the state that's um, funding my time to help the town um, right. with updating your plan. Um, Sorry, I forgot. I kicked something. It had wires down there. I know. I, 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 she I usually hears it. Every, <laughs> sorry, so, um, so uh, the kind of one of the reasons for keeping your plan up to date is that it allows you to have access to certain um, grants um, for hazard mitigation projects. Um, and it also is just a nice way to um, come together as a town and talk about what you feel kind of your major issues or risks are and, and, and kind of document that and document um, some potential projects that you'd like to do moving forward to kind of mitigate um, those issues. Um, the focus of the plan is on natural hazards, um, though it does, we do, in the plan it talks about man-made hazards as well, particularly hazardous materials, so that does get incorporated, um, but a lot of the work is focused on the natural hazards. Um, and the handout, um, so I gave you two handouts, um, one is a schedule which it has the kickoff meeting as May, but we're close. <laughs> um, um, and this is kind of like a mini kickoff meeting because we're not going to get fully into stuff. We're just kind of o overview. Um, but um, the process will go basically from now through next June is how long we have um, in terms of the grant funds. The idea would be to have four to five committee meetings over the course of um, the next six to seven months to try to like really get into it and draft the plan and review the plan um, and then um, leave some time for the state and the, the federal government to review it um, and um, the other thing to note is that the town you apply for a municipal vulnerability preparedness um, planning grant which um, I don't know if how familiar you're all with that, um, but that's a, it's a separate program um, that comes with separate grant funds, but the, 
the, there's a lot of overlap between the hazard mitigation planning and the what's called the MVP planning. And so if that comes through, we can do our best um, to not duplicate efforts, but to actually kind of um, um, cover both both of those efforts with one kind of process so that you're not having to come together um, both for that and hazard mitigation and kind of talking about very similar things. It'll be two separate products that come out of it. And um, I can talk a little bit about those differences, but um, if you know when we'll be notified. I don't know, I would, I would think pretty soon, okay. um, but I, I don't know for sure. Um, we submitted in May. Yeah, um, so hopefully within the next few weeks, um, because that will then kind of change things a little bit in terms of how we want to proceed. But either way, we were thinking of having um, some type of community kind of public meeting in the fall, and that would probably work for both projects if you do end up getting that planning grant. Um, and so the MVP plan is looking more towards the future, um, and especially taking into consideration um, impacts of climate change. Um, and the hazard mitigation plan has, in the past, it's, it's focused more on kind of what have been your past, um, kind of past storm events, past issues in town um, that have impacted the town, and how do you want to mitigate that risk going forward. Um, but the handout I gave you, the second handout, is actually from the state's, um, the state released their hazard mitigation and climate adaptation plan in um, last fall, in September 2018. And with their most recent plan, they've really integrated both the like, kind of looking at past events and what has um, occurred in the state, as well as looking at um, what are the um, kind of projected impacts of climate change and how do those, um, affect these different types of natural hazards. And so they're trying to integrate kind of both of those things. And, and as a local plan, you have to address all of the hazards that the state plan has. And so if you look at the hazards that are listed here, um, we have to address all of those in your local plan. Um, sea level rise, all of those related to sea level rise, we'll just say they're not applicable to Sunderland but all of the others will be addressed. And one of the new ones is actually um, invasive species. Um, that was not in the last plan, and that will be a whole new yeah, topic. That's definitely a problem. Um, but what this um, handout, um, which is labeled as figure 2-1, shows is kind of basically the primary climate change interactions that we'll be discussing as part of this process are changes in precipitation, which is both um, kind of an overall increase in the amount of precipitation, but also changes in terms of the um, intensity mm. of um, precipitation, as well as things like more winter rain, um, which can really impact um, roads and culverts and bridges and a lot of things. Um, and then rising temperatures, um, though we can address um, extreme cold as well, because that has been an issue, but it's more about extreme heat, but also extreme cold if you've had um, um, any impacts from some of those more recent events. But thinking about, you know, in the future, there'll likely be more days over 90 degrees um, during the summer. And, and what will that do to infrastructure? What does that do to vulnerable populations? Thinking about that. Um, as well as how does it affect your natural resources, and especially things like wildfire. Um, and then the other um, kind of big category, climate category, is extreme weather events, and that falls under a lot of different hazards, and just the kind of, again, the intensity of storms um, and the frequency is changing. Um, so we're going to try to take into consideration all of that um, when we talk about kind of the town's risks. But then we'll really kind of boil it down and start to talk about um, specifically what's happened in town recently. What are your biggest concerns? Um, is this going to be uh, bouncing off of the baseline of the existing mitigation plan? Yeah. With, with, with these yeah. slightly updated categories? So the, a lot of these categories are still the same Good. as the last plan. So there's a few new ones. Okay. We, are, um, we are using the most recent <clears throat> state plan mm -hmm. to kind of um, pull in a lot of the information. Okay. 
So the, the local plans include background information on all of the hazards, right. and so we're trying to incorporate a lot from the state plan that talks more about the climate impacts into the local plans this time around. So there will be a, n a number of changes, but in terms of like the local information from the last plan, mm -hmm. that will get pulled into the new plan and then updated as needed. So those those areas of focus from the last one, of course, were you know awareness, response, and hardening. Yeah. Those, those kind of three areas, targets, and then goals and timelines. Yeah. Structured the same way, but maybe with a little bit more of a, a broader look with these new categories or slightly modified categories. Um, yeah, I mean it'll 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 be pretty similar again. But I think the big changes are the extreme temperatures. That's a new one as well. I forgot to mention that. Um, I think the main change is when we're doing the risk assessment um, um, exercise, which we're not going to get to tonight, but um, we would probably get to at the next meeting. Um, the diff the biggest difference is in the past planning. Um, when we've done that in the past, it's really thinking about past events in town. Right. Like how often do you typically have these types of events and basing your risk off of that. Whereas what we're trying to encourage towns to do this time around is think about that as well as what you think might be coming. That that's like the big difference. Getting there. four inches of we four inches of rain in forty eight hours. That right. you know, those kind of little things. Like when did that start happening? Well and especially when it happens <laughs> yeah. in like February when the ground's frozen, right, and you can't absorb. Yeah. Then and then the um, the amount of moisture we had in the air in August and September yep. of 2018, which yep. you know, caused some issues at the elementary school. Sure. In terms so, of um, mold growth and a couple the humidity. Couple of okay, so high humidity. Yeah. I'm wondering if there's a tie-in to, as I'm thinking, like one of the things that we're trying to do in the ditch committee is to clear out stuff that is grown in and closed sure. up and blocked stuff and I'm Could thinking under invasives uh, right and then like inland flooding inland and things flooding. like that yeah. but yeah definitely invasives too. Yeah, we, don't, we don't think about inland flooding unless it's three inches in your basement yeah right it's, this isn't this isn't necessarily Hingham but the Connecticut River can back straight up all the way to the foot of, of yeah. Mount, Mount Toby that's what it, those ditches are designed to do yeah, um, yeah, certainly um, high groundwater as well can be an issue. We have a lot of that here. Yeah, <laughs> um, and then um, things like a lot of towns, um, especially towns with more um, kind of extreme topography, um, things like undersized culverts. Yep. Um, Bank erosion. Yeah, so we can kind of do try to document all of that okay. in the plan. And then um, I'm sure the town probably already has some projects already that you're underway or thinking about that would be included as well as yep. just some potential like well you know exploring trying to figure out a problem and putting that in culverts have been an active discussion in the last yeah. 24 months yeah that, size, I mean, that's a big size, sizing and cleaning and in their general uh time and service of our current inventory okay all things culvert right yeah flooding is often a big topic i mean that's like kind of biggest section of the plan um, but but certainly there's other issues with like wind as well and but well, we've had we've had both of those things here it's been actually a few years since we've been hit by a microburst but we've lost a, a number of barns yeah. and yeah it, it, it just happened again you know the, my, my tender age of nearly a hundred certainly things have changed <laughs> okay yeah, and some of the things are hard to um, plan for or mitigate, right. um, yep. but it's it's still good to kind of document what's happening and, and and we can do some we can always do research and look into possible mitigation actions for things that maybe are more unique to Sunderland. And again, as part of this, as part of this, there'll be a, a response component because I mean the step was a pretty uh, robust plan. This group spent a lot of time doing drilling and communication and townwide drills and intermunicipal drills so that's not actually not a focus of the, of the hazard mitigation yeah. um yeah so it's a little bit separate from it's um it's really about what actions can a town take to um reduce damage from future events it's not so much um we certainly talk about communication and evacuation and yeah. sheltering yeah. Um, and some there may be some actions that come out of that, but yeah, it's, it's not like a, an emergency response plan. But it helps feed what the 
the, the base categories for what the responses could be based on. High water, high heat, those kinds of things. Yep, yep. You know, it so helps, that, it yes. helps, it helps that group <clears throat> work. Understand what they yep. might be dealing with, yep. yeah. Yep. I see one category here, and then I'll open it up if I could. It says uh, update of critical uh, facility inventory, um, and that may well tie it into a uh, capital planning group that had an architectural survey of our municipal buildings. So okay. we have a pretty up-to-date, mm -hmm. like fresh out of the six-month-old. Great. Okay. Okay. Town buildings. Okay. Yeah, yeah we should. Um... Questions, dialogue, timeline. Steve, you want to, I, I can see it. You want to <laughs> ask a question. <laughs> Not so much of a question, uh -huh. but um, kind of more of a concurrent statement yeah. that a lot of this stuff is interrelated. And mm -hmm. Not so much the fact that maybe we're getting a lot more rain this year, what do we do? But if in two years we get a drought and all this vegetation has had a chance to grow and sure. now it's really dry, yep. and there's more vegetation than we've had in the last 20 years to deal with. Great point. It's, you know, it's a fire hazard in the ditches, things can't drain that well. Yep. If it has happened that we've had a brush fire and it's been so wet in the field we get stuck trying to get to the brush fire, mm -hmm. you know, that, that irony happens. Yeah. And then the other part of it that I, I can't wait to sink my teeth into <laughs> later on as we get down further in the timeline mm -hmm. is how do we educate and enable the, the folks that live here in town to deal with some of that vegetation that's growing yeah. and how do we raise awareness don't sweep the, the sand off your street and put it in that ditch that's by your house yeah um, or the storm drain right storm drain, <laughs> yeah which is popular when you see yep. folks sweeping the sand right into the drain <laughs> um, yep. that's you know, that's all part of it and um, Lori Ari and Dee and I have been participating in some county drills on the emergency response level for flooding yep. specifically related to the river right. and uh, different things. So there's there's been a lot of activity with this sort of a uh, scenario. Mm -hmm. you know, pick, pick your poison. Right. And um, this fits in really nice. And so I'm kind of new to this plan itself and it, it's a pretty um, quick timeline. We're looking at a year from now in June mm -hmm. 2020 that everything is reviewed and you know, hopefully it's approved. What's what are, what are the next steps after that? Um, so the kind of one of the most um, useful pieces of the plan is it will will create um, an action plan that has um, uh, possible next steps that the town could take, and we'll work on prioritizing that. I mean, there's one from the last plan, so we'll we'll review that, see what's been done, what hasn't been done, what's still relevant, um, and try to. Um, try to kind of set some priority actions and then identify potential funding sources um, and who would be you know seeking those I think the nice thing about if you do get your MVP planning grant mm -hmm. that the nice thing about that process is it really tries to to drill down to your major issues and your major um, and kind of like it, it identifies you know three to five top actions that the town wants to take, which is really nice. Whereas the hazard mitigation plan, we have to we have to kind of fill out a, a bigger action plan that addresses all the hazards and, and sometimes it can feel overwhelming. So if we do end up doing those two processes at the same time, at least that'll be a nice way to have, you know, you'll have your top priority actions right. um, that hopefully you can focus on um, first but you'll still have other things identified to work on over the course of the next five years. Um, like long and short term goals. Yeah, and we would try to do that anyways if we're just doing hazard mitigation, but I think um, the MVP process pulls together like a big group of stakeholders um, to really like try to come to a consensus on what are the top you know, things you want to move forward with. So. Ben wants to know how many meetings and how often. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, I didn't ask that, but since <laughs> exactly. you mentioned it. Yeah, so, um, so the, the way that, so some towns, every town's different, so, and everyone's busy, so um, we'll have probably four or, or so, like, kind of core group working meetings that will be really, like, reviewing the sections of the plan and going through the drafts. 
Um, and we need to have at least one kind of public meeting that brings together more people. So, um, and then there'll be opportunity also to review things outside of the meetings and provide feedback um, to Sherry, who can send it to me. Um, we have to be careful with open meeting not to share with everyone, but you can have also um, review outside of meetings and provide feedback so that if you can't come to all the meetings, um, you still have an opportunity to look at sections that are relevant to you. Um, so not to entirely cliff notes what I thought you were headed toward, but go ahead. Yeah, and it, it sounds like some of these grant opportunities would tie in directly with capital projects that we've also identified. Sounds good, yeah. So it might, you know, it makes sense for, you know, all the different buildings and municipalities to, right. and the capital planning committee to keep that in mind. And you might put one on the back burner um, for this potential down the road. Sure, that makes good sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the event there's uh, grant round opportunities, which this a completed and approved plan would allow us access to grants, maybe inclusive to capital. Great. So what are the next steps, Alyssa? What do you think? <laughs> so a core of the group is here. Okay. There is a handful of SEPT folks who aren't here, but they're still just as active. Okay. And that is a pretty easy email list for us to generate. Great. Okay. And what kind of raw information do we need to present or provide for uh, your work in this formulation is the last plan you already have that yeah um mm -hmm. so i mean one thing would be we could um kind of distribute the last action plan as a starting point so that people can look at you know maybe actions that pertain to their um, department or or board uh, to see if if what's been done um and then the next thing would be to schedule a meeting, a working group meeting, yep. um, to basically what I can do is do a brief presentation on, there's some wind. Yes. Um, do a brief presentation covering some of this information that's in this table about climate change impacts, but just going into it a little more, like you talked about drought. And, you know, we've collected a lot of information on um, what we're seeing here in the county. Um, so presenting that and then doing um, um, doing the risk assessment okay. where basically we'll go through this table and identify um, the level of risk that each of these hazards present to the town and while we're doing that we'll talk about okay what's what's been happening in town since the last plan was done okay. and we'll have a map and we can mark up the map if there's specific sense. problem areas hmm. and really just like hash that out at, at that meeting hmm. Um, so that would be the next step is to have a, a working group meeting to do that. I've got one question. With the uh, entities that we're trying to shield from all these events, mm -hmm. are we looking at strictly population or are we also looking at the agricultural interests in town? Are we looking at you know, the, the, the high um, concerned populations, the elementary school, certain parts of the, the day. Yeah. How, how far are we going to reach with the considerations? The plan addresses population as well as like you, vulnerable population. Um, um, so both just, you know, residents in general um, as well as um, folks who might um, have particular kind of struggle with, with dealing with emergencies. Um, and then, yeah, infrastructure, both town and private, like property, private property, as well as municipal property. Um, yeah, uh, and then certainly businesses and agriculture in Sunderland would be a big one. Um, so it, it's, <laughs> we kind of touch on all of those um, when we're talking about it. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're about to run the entire gauntlet in that you have a concentration of children at the elementary school and we're in the last stages of permitting for affordable senior housing yep right the whole gauntlet run, right run, right. run the whole right, right. 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 The, the whole thing <laughs> we'll that's, that's right, right. Well, that kind of that kind of concentration was not necessarily part of our last 
set planning. We didn't have a concentration of seniors. We did town-wide outreach to seniors in place. Yeah. And now we have the opportunity, again, we're likely to have a permit relatively soon uh, for concentration of, of seniors in one space. So, yeah, it'd be interesting to add that to some of the response pieces. And then obviously there's, um, you know, a large um, student pop college student population as well. Right. Yep. Um, so Just get them on Twitter. They'll be fine. Considering <laughs> evacuation yeah, or things like that. So. That's a strategy. I know. It's a very challenging population yep. for us to reach. Yeah. Yeah. Very challenging. Yeah. yeah. In terms of just communications. And, yeah. yeah. It's not always in English. Yeah. Correct. Oh. Well, exactly right. Just got to go with pictures already. on Instagram. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> exactly. See, and those are the things that I mean. That's pretty unique to Sunderland. Mm -hmm. um, that will be interesting. Swarm of bees, run! Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah and I, I know it was uh, talked about. I think in the last plan too. Yep. So we'll just review, you know, see if there needs to be changes, especially with changes in technology and right. everything. Yep. So yeah. So Alyssa, with respect to the. Um, information gathering you're going to do some of that back at your office yes and you're going to reach out to us in a couple of weeks a month or i see this right here we starting we're starting in may right now <laughs> yes and um. may, may, we have may through february but it looks like may through september is the beginning of the revisit are you thinking you need how long before our first group gets together um i mean probably the sooner the better okay. it it, it will be good to know about the MVP planning grant, okay. but I think we can do that initial meeting. Um, either I'm checking way. in with the original plan or the current plan. Yeah, um, that kind of a risk assessment yep. overview um, because that actually would be really helpful and informative for the MVP process if you end up okay. doing that. So either way, we probably should try to have that meeting um, once <laughs> I so, mean, it's gonna have to be summer yeah yeah, yeah no, you know. I totally get it um, so uh, if we if we get this list to uh, email list together and put together some dates are there days of the week that are better for any there's no but there's no good time the yeah, question yeah. is yeah. You, know, <laughs> you want a weekday you want a Saturday morning with coffee a lot of people show up for that one that's <laughs> true you know what what kind of time do you think for the first meeting 60 minutes to 120 minutes it'll be probably an hour and a half okay so we're getting 90 yeah. minutes and it can be it can be evening or during the day. Okay. Every again, every town's different. Um, we haven't done weekend before. Um, oh, we have. <laughs> Saturday morning with donuts. Saturday could carry a lot of weight. <laughs> well, it's it all carry good. weight in another it's all way. Good. Yeah. I understand. <laughs> so in an evening, say six ish, does that work for like most? We're, we're kind of getting out of our other jobs and coming into these jobs, sort of. Sort of. Sort of. You know, early, early in the week or late in the week is good for me. Okay. Early, early. Yeah, that's fine. Well, we'll figure it out. Yeah, I mean, if you can figure out some potential dates. Not Wednesdays. Um, no, not Wednesdays. Okay. That work for all of you, um, let me know what. Very good. So what we'll do is we'll, in the next we couple. We do it off, a, off selectments. Select, the select board meets uh, every other Monday during That's during true. You could do it on an off We night. could do an off night. Off Monday, yeah. Right, an off Monday at 6 p.m. or 6.30 p.m. at the latest, and, and earlier the better on those off nights for me is fine. It can yeah. be as early as 6 if that works for people. That, that's generally fine for me, too. Okay, so we'll flow a couple of times in okay. a location. We'll give you a chance to kind of gather the pieces that we need yeah. and talk about that first pass of here's the new challenges mm -hmm. where do we think the priorities are it seems to me like it's like the uh, dlts decisions right where do you put these priorities anyway oh dlta yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, it's like dlta right <laughs> it's kind of like that where it's like okay we got we got these 20 things that are right. all out there yeah. where where are these 20 things on the priority list and how do they actually impact you and you assign a number and take yeah. it from there yeah, and well, and it will be yeah, and it will be kind of going through each hazard and yep. just update, updating from the last plan. You know what's been happening in town. What are your concerns? And um, and then it's a the risk assessment is we have um, little rating tables, and so everyone's basing their ratings off of different um, criteria, okay. and we go through it. And are we going through the worksheets the last time? Right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs>
So what we'll do is, uh, there's no more questions about this kind of unfolding again. It's revisiting another plan. You know, it's five years, we update it. And as anyone who's been around knows, my nature is mad. So things are different now and uh, we gotta be ready for it. Uh, next couple of days, there'll be an email blast out and we'll put together, we'll shoot for a Monday and we'll shoot for an off selectman's meeting Monday because like we said when we set the schedule, we didn't just schedule more meetings. Just right? waiting for them to <laughs> fill up. More meetings will fill we up. We opened it up. So. Exactly. <laughs> so we'll, we'll shoot for yep. uh, in the next several Mondays, uh, every other Monday from tonight. Uh, we'll get one in before June is over and we'll shoot for 6 p.m. Okay. Okay. And we'll float that out there and we can come to some consensus about it and we'll make it in this space here. Great. Because yeah, then we have big tables big we tables. can use. Yeah, you have to roll up the maps. Yep, right. Exactly. Yeah, right. that would be great. Okay, sounds okay. good. Any other questions with regard to this? And I thank for everybody for, for both coming out, but also this is the kind of, you know, heady stuff that is, is actually the, the groundwork that's the substantive piece to local government. Mm -hmm. It's what we do. Less politics, more see, governing. It's the unglamorous but very exactly important right. stuff. And, and as I said before, I've worked with the Housing Committee. I'm sure it's going to be a great plan because she's in charge. <laughs> I don't know if I'm in charge. But I'm Your name's going to be on it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much, everybody. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. So we're up next is going to be a building inspector, assessor, wants to talk about online permitting. Now this is not talking. This isn't telling. It's talking, right? No, I know. Hey, nice to meet you. Nice to you. The state gives you a shirt when you get a ticket. Is that what happened? Yeah. Good job. <laughs> I found this in a home this uh, weekend. I wanted to present that. To oh, nice. Said, That's actually the home yeah. that came out of. So nice. We'll get you that for somewhere in the town hall. Yeah, we'll get it right down yeah, in the town thanks. hall. That's beautiful. Well played. Nice autumnal view. Can you see that, Epcot? That one. Nice. There it is. <laughs> Thanks, building inspector. You're welcome. Thank you. We'll get this hung downstairs. So online permitting. Teresa was in a little while ago and talked to us with a guy that you kicked out and <laughs> said, oh. <laughs> <laughs> said that uh, this was an opportunity. Our neighboring communities uh, use these kinds of uh, systems and that it may help streamline some of our own process in town. Is that your experience as well? Yes. Yeah. And. Lisa, you were talking about it being a, a, uh, the service takes a portion of the fees to pay for the service. It doesn't necessarily end up on the rate somehow. Well, first of all, we looked into three different uh, options. Yep. The first two, you had to buy the software, which yep. was a lot of money. Yep. So this last one uh, is through Point Software. Okay. And they uh, have a service where they charge small communities pay as you go. Yep. And it's basically a thousand dollar licensing fee for the year. So their logic is if you have a hundred permits and you go up on your fees ten dollars, it could be self funding. Okay. So it really there's it's very low risk. And I asked him what if we don't like it? He said, Well, give it at least ninety days to get used to it. Sure. So you're not locked into a long contract. Yeah, it right. seems like there's it's very low risk and uh, everything to gain. And so I just sort of became the liaison here because Sherry was busy and asked me if I could talk to him. So I've been talking to him and now, now we have Tom on board and Tom has a little bit of experience. With so I'm gonna turn this over yes. to Tom because he's huh? got a whole okay. nice little outline and I can nice. chime in if you yeah. need it. We've been using it in Southampton for over three years. Great, okay. Um, they do obviously more permits and all and it's a flat fee there of 4,000. Yep. Um, in a comparison, I worked under Joe. I started in East Hampton under Joe and they company they were using like I said, much bigger in East Hampton, but it was starting at 40,000. Yep. So it's a huge, they're out of East Long Meadow, mm -hmm. they're great. We've yep. had, um, I mean, we came in at the beginning and, and any other place I've worked, any other programs are so much more expensive and have bigger, I mean, they'll be down for a whole day. Sure. These guys, you reach out to, email them, and right back, oh, right from nice. the owner direct. That's good. So good service and everything. They're very, so very good. And it, um, as far as benefits, I, I had done a little outline, um, the postage, you know, it's two mailings minimum a permit. Right. So there's a dollar every permit. Um, emailing the um, you know notifications. Um, one thing I was going to request them I'm jumping around would be a um, tablet. What I have in Southampton is a tablet, mm -hmm. and literally they have it. Any time I can I can start flagging a property. So mm -hmm. if there's a complaint, 
So that's part of the, the program and I have the tablet, uh, a simple wood stove inspection. Yeah. Take a picture, how it was when I inspected that it, you know, yeah. met the code, what's altered and heaven forbid two years later there's a fire, you know, they changed something. Right, right. Kind of covers the town. Okay. Um, they failed an inspection because of some bracing or blocking or something. Right on site, I can email and instantly right, the right contractor there. homeowner knows they need to fix that and then usually next day you're back out and you're back nice back working on it um and does it help that like especially too for people who are doing the billing I mean, does it help the turnaround process a little bit i think because that's that would be a good selling point too for folks you know oh if it cuts permits, down it, it takes a long time just just now we did one thing wrong rip the paper up start over yeah. you know then make you know the copy to mail out the copy to go to the assessor mm. or it's, boom it's just emailed and yeah. um Envelopes, yep. not only All paper that. but envelopes. Um, as far as the customer service is 24, you know, 24 seven for them. Okay. Um, you'll get feedback. Well, what if my dad's never been on a computer? He refuses to. So he, we're still here Monday nights or at on call. Mm -hmm. I'm there to go to the house, whatever, and, and fill the permit out with them, and then I would enter it. Okay. okay. So that cost me some more. You know, you I'm salary, but cost you know the town some time. However. You know, I think that's kind of the swap by charging for the whole system. Sure. Right. You're getting that extra service by not using the online. Right, right. They've also offered a kiosk. Yeah. Yes. That's part, part of the whole setup okay. is they'll give us the licensing for a kiosk. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, I've been talking with Sherry. Maybe we could take a computer that somebody's upgrading to a new computer because all we really needed to do we needed to get on the town website web access, right? permit and we want to get on gis because one thing that i did i don't know if you remember in the budget is we we're required to have paper maps right yep. and what they used to do was have these indexes that came with the paper map that shows who is the owner of the property well the minute those things are printed in january they're obsolete because as soon as you have one sale right Done. So I yeah. asked, how much does that cost? Well, it's $400 to have that paper index. So I said, what if we don't have the paper index? And because we have GIS. Yeah. So if we have a computer, you know, people are already using it at home. Right. And that's pretty much real time. I update it minimum once a month, sometimes multiple times. If I make a change, I, all I have to do is update the file. And then it's real time on the site. Smart. So, so I thought, well, save the $400 on that. If we have the kiosk, if somebody needs to look, it's way better if they log on to our GIS, see who the current owner is, mm -hmm. it shows the past owner, it shows a lot of information on those cards, so they don't need that paper index, and then maybe we can apply that to some kind of upgrade in technology. Sure. And then on that note, sometimes, you know, people don't really put their correct address. They think they have the right street. <laughs> well, this software, you have to pick from a drop-down. Okay. So, so you can't put you some, a... you know, as known as type right. of address. Yeah. Yep. And same thing with like a map, like we were just talking, like if somebody has a parcel of land, it doesn't have a number. And if they just put, you know, Joe Smith, Amherst Road, sure. that could be 10 different parcels. So then we have to try to figure out which parcel are they going to be building on. This way, they have to pick end. from their correct piece. Correct. So there's that quality control thing. Plus, like sometimes, you know, when they're writing the permits, they either skip a number. I mean, it's just... It's not like anybody's fault. It's just hard to keep track sometimes of the numbers. So I always wonder, well, is there a permit that I missed? Mm -hmm. Because there was some big properties that got missed because I didn't get the information that there was a house or a barn or something like that. So this way you can't skip a number. Right. You know, so there's a lot of quality control things. So it, and tie, it also ties right into the assessors. Yes. Yeah, because it's right out of my database. Yeah. So, you know, we'd be working together and then I don't have to... Like if there's a CEO, I can just go in there and see. Mm -hmm. Is there a certificate of occupancy? Mm -hmm. Are these people in the house? I don't have to say, Tom, did they have, you know. Sure. There's a lot less back and forth. And then just keeping track of the paper permits, mm -hmm. if they get filed out of order, or you know. This is all trackable. You can get a spreadsheet. You know, yeah, it's I just do a lot of my write, you know, so handwriting, I write a lot of them at home. Because yeah. tonight I had four or five, I didn't get to them yet. So yeah, I'll yeah. do them tomorrow morning, tonight, whatever it be. And I have to make sure I get the, you know, when I stop in here, I got to get a copy for at home as well. I did get the date stamp, oh, but yeah. put copy, put one in the assessor, Just and then my cumbersome. review on them. The, you know, a lot of times you can't read what somebody writes. Mm -hmm. yeah. and I'm probably the same way if I filled one out. Oh yeah, yeah. 
So now she can go right online and get yes. that information well, yeah. daily yep. if you want it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Really sure. And I'm thinking week, for the whatever. kiosk too, we could actually use an iPad for that because that would work. You know, because if we're right. all you need is website access, and uh, that'll get you in. Really, you know, if that's. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if we really want them to be able to print or not. You can still print from that too. Yeah. Okay. And then, well, and I mean, the, uh, the newer version too is going to be. Uh, You'll be able, it'll display the website as a desktop version oh. of it. So, well, whatever that, you, might, uh, uh, that might work. Whatever you guys think, hmm. it's just. It'd be less expensive, too. So, than, yeah, uh, I mean, it doesn't have to, we don't really want them to be able to do anything else. Right. With the computer. Just enter it. We just, yeah. well, we just want them to be able to access the town website, yeah. which will then give them the building permit and the GIS. Yeah. So, they don't really like, we don't want them Google searching, we don't want them doing anything else. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure we could set it up to restrict. Yeah, you could restrict. Because mm -hmm. yep. that's all we really need them to be able to do. So there's really no excuse. I don't have a computer, because like Tom right. said, we can help if they do it on paper, it. then we got to enter them. And that brings up the question of somebody asked, well, why are we charging people more to, um, you know, have online permitting? Well, if what if they just did paper? Sure. Well, if they do paper, then it's costing us money to enter it. So it's really the same across the board. You have sure. to be the same for everybody. Those costs. But it's just there's very few uh, downside that I can yep. think of and tons of benefits of right. doing and this. Right, and if it speeds up the process, that's always a common complaint, you know. Yeah. So that and it We've helps to hit that pain point. I thought if we could start with the building department, maybe other departments, you know, will jump right. on. Sure. Yep. Yep. As How many are included? How many... On that. Um, I forget exactly. I think so. I think it's five and, that are included. So if you started with building and then it's tough. Like, you know, I, I, if, if the electrical and yeah. plumbing inspector would even want to be on it. Um, Southampton, the plumber inspector is never going to go on. Mm -hmm. So the electrical licensing inspector covers can't believe after I got him. Like, yeah, he's multiple. Like, wow, the time he's but saving. And, why didn't we do this? Yeah, why didn't we do it? Yeah, but. There's, there's no penalty for not everybody going on. Because I said to him, what if we just start with the building? He said, that's fine. You can yep. start with them. You can add on department says, you know, it's not like extra. You know, they're very flexible on. And so maybe if they see how this works, maybe they'll want to get right. on. Use it as a pilot. Because some people are uh, hesitant, you know, I mean, like. It's new. Something. But this is the big, yep. this is the biggie here. And if we can get this going, it'll help. It'll help everybody. Because a lot of people get frustrated with our part-time hours. Right. Right. So this way, it's like, it. well, now you can get on anytime you want. Exactly. And you get that auto email. There's a lot of auto <clears throat> responses. I like the sounds of it. What are the mechanics of rollout? July 1. Is what so sure. rollout for July 1. We have to notify the public at some point. And the second question is, is there current appropriation, or is this going to be based on an increase in fees? Um, well, that's up to you. We do have funds in the um, technology line mm -hmm. for savings under the um, mm -hmm. new monthly uh, maintenance contract yep. with Northeast. Yep. Um, and we can cover the iPad in the technology line as well. That makes sense. Um, but we do think that perhaps it might be time to consider increasing the fees okay. uh, gradually. They haven't been looked at since 16, was 16. it? 16. Okay. So, Tom, you're going to come back with a suggested uh, uh, touch toward the fees that helps cover this cost? Yes, I did a couple options, yeah. one and two, just yeah. to throw, throw it out. I wanted to make yeah. clear, though, that um, of any town I've worked part-time or anywhere, I've never had the agricultural building, so actually I didn't. It isn't on there. Yep. So I'm assuming you'd want to keep that. That needs to be added. But I just want to make that clear that somebody that's up, not in. That's somebody not throws up there. two acres of greenhouse. We don't want to reinvent right, the wheel. Right. We, already, we already have a fee structure for that. Yep. And okay. I, get, I get a lot in, in Southampton why they don't have it. Yep. That's nice to have that. So okay. that, So I just want to make that clear that that wasn't on there. Okay. Um, and a couple of proposals. The number, the number um, one proposal would be, you know, a higher amount, and that's actually what West Hampton mm -hmm. and South Hampton use right now yeah. to the T, except the agriculture. Yep. Okay, so at this time, since we're looking at a July 1 rollout, let's take uh, some action on moving forward with the point software for the permits, mm -hmm. right? Is there a motion? So. Yeah, a motion. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Two to zero, please. 
With respect to the fee schedule, if we could take another meeting and look at these and have them roll out accordingly so that we have a, a full complement of the board, we have some input from uh, uh, people across the community, uh, we can get these posted, that would be helpful, again, as suggestions. Yep. There's nothing extraordinary here. I think it's in keeping with in time. As someone who's in the permit business, I think our permit five days a week, it seems, <laughs> you know? And they're kind of all over the place, depending on where you are. They're different in Chelsea than they are in Great Barrington, but not very much. Yep. It's all about covering the costs for uh, the services being provided, especially in an enterprise format. So we'll take action on this in the next, uh, at our next meeting. We're, we're skipping next week, so two weeks. Sounds good. Would how's you like going? me to be present as well, Please. then? Yeah, yeah. Sure, if you don't okay. mind. So how's it going? Good. Good. Well, good. Couldn't, good be more, couldn't be more thrilled with having you on board. Thank you. Okay, so Pleasure. point software it is. You can let them know, and they'll be like, we got another one. <laughs> <laughs> But it is, as, again, as I said earlier, in my, my professional life, we take out permits uh, all, over, all over the Commonwealth, and it is a godsend when they are available online. Great. Anything else for us? I just wanted to go over a couple other things, please. if you don't mind. Well, oh, please do. Um, uh, this is a rare occasion we get you in the room. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Joe, we had to <laughs> oh, maybe send the cops after him to bring oh, him come in. Come on. <laughs> uh, the alternate, I just wanted your permission a lot of times Towns just say, cities say just for the commissioner to appoint them, but yep. I have the opportunity to take on two more alternates, um, which is not very often. I was at a training and Mark Snow, who's the commissioner in Greenfield, yep. asked if I needed somebody yep. to volunteer, so I do have his resume. Okay. And Ron Lauren is the um, local inspector in Westfield, mm -hmm. lives in Southampton, and he said that um, I had re reached out to him. He just passed his third test to be a conditional commissioner and could be an alternate. Yep. Um, to have both on board, um, and while we're talking about that, the other the other question was be um, right now. I think it's a twenty five dollar, basically per hour inspection. Mm -hmm. And in the future, if in the back of your mind, just think of what, if, if that could be to keep people in that position. Yep. Um, the an example is West Hampton. It's fifty dollars per inspection yep. for the for the local. Um, that's plumbing, electrical, and and building. Um, and that'll be part of our larger discussion about fee schedules as well as a cost structure around inspection services? Yes. Okay. So you're asking for two alternates for tonight? Yes. And Joe still wants to be on by, I did speak with Joe, yeah. he just said knee surgery. Yeah, yeah, right, right. But he said, um, but you take it or leave it. A lot of times I call them for Southampton, oh, can you get somebody else? So I'd, to have three is great okay. right now. Um, and you've worked with uh, Lauren, Mar I'm sorry, Ronald Lauren before? Yes. And you know Mark Snow as an instructor? He w I actually worked for over a year as a part-timer under Mark in Greenfield. Sure. Okay. Uh, that makes perfect sense if we're in the appointing process to uh, allow for the appointment as uh, alternate inspectors, alternate building inspectors. Uh, Ronald Lauren and Mark Snow, uh, they've got their certifications, right? They've got them all covered. And they can cover for you, and you have a working relationship with them. Yes. Sounds easy enough for me. What yep. do you think? Yeah, that's a good idea to have extra okay. backup. Some good bench strength. Uh, is there a motion? Motion. Second. <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Two to zero. Please. <coughs> Excuse you me. How easy that was? Thank you. <laughs> okay. And one one other thing I wanted to run by was just a uh, on a municipal permit. Mm -hmm. How do you feel? How do you do it here? As far as I never even reached out to Joe, is do you charge on that? Uh, um, historically, the board has waived on municipal permits. Yes. Okay. Uh, we look at them by job. Okay, so it's a case by case. case. By, yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. By job. All right. I just wanted to check on that. Yeah. By job, by department. Yep. Okay. Uh, and I say that because uh, you can have a municipal permit that's part of a uh, use a, a treatment plant, for for example, even though uh, they're a municipal district of sorts. Uh, there's a fee structure that goes with uh, users. So, again, we look at it case by case. Okay. Mostly they're waived. All right, sounds good. It's been, been our history, although raising fees now, I don't know. We may not be able to. <laughs> yeah. may not be able to. Well, I just ran into it where, um, again, the alternate of a plumber, electrical inspector that doesn't live in town, mm -hmm. 
it's tough to get them to come out and not get the fee so the town yeah. loses that's the only exactly uh, right you know the only reason I questioned it and I think it's it's important to um, reinforce the point that fees for inspection services whether they be building or health are part of public safety in the grander umbrella public safety sure. isn't just cops and fire pit. nope right it's just that very true that, they're, they're the responders. When you're building something, you got to make sure it stays right. And when you're in a restaurant, you want to make sure it stays right. If you're doing an event, you want to make sure it goes right. Those, those are as much public safety as, as the responders. Okay. That's enough of my diatribe. That, the, phone, the phone already <laughs> rang, I'm sure. Is there, what the hell is he talking about? <laughs> Tom, thanks so much. And again, yeah, thank you. Welcome thanks. on nice board. Nice we'll, 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 thank you. We'll be uh, thanks. back in touch about our next meeting. Okay. Online. Great. We thanks. like it. Right. work, Teresa. Okay. Okay, uh, so technology is going to take care of a uh, tablet for the building inspector mm -hmm. to take care of that, that helps the facilitate with this yeah. and licensing as well. Great. Okay, Sherry, I'm going to jump to you first for town administrator updates and Dave and I can think about what may or may not have happened in the last couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so we're working on closing reports um, and projects and those kind year. of things. The auditor is here. Uh, we've applied hey. for extensions for the Complete Streets project for the Hadley and um, Old Amherst Road projects. Yep. Um, the Sugarbush um, easement's taking a little longer mm -hmm. than we had expected. But we did um, get an, an extension until December 31st for that one, so mm -hmm. the paperwork's in process. Also, we get an extension for the capital project mm -hmm. um, where we had a kickoff meeting on May 22nd um, and uh, we're working on ADA designs and, and school and so streets that, yeah. for school street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we should have some conceptual meeting uh, drawings and stuff ready in August and we'll have a public presentation. Um, there'll probably be a couple more planning that's, meetings. That's parallel to the uh, manhole installation, which we've approved. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that, so that, that goes on to part of the same grant. The construction part's moving forward. Right. But the design part is something that, that's it's unfolding. Is unfolding now, okay. right. So uh, the contract for the construction for the manhole was awarded yeah. to Morse Equipment at the last meeting. Yeah. Um, and the contract's downstairs for you to sign. Uh, they've signed, so they'll begin that construction soon. Uh, we had, like I said, we had the um, project kickoff meeting. We have some residents from uh, School Street. Mm -hmm. The library was here. Oh, good. Um, Pathways representative, mm -hmm. so um, a good representation of the stakeholders good. involved in the meeting. Can I circle back? to the uh, access way to the sewer system with the manhole. We, 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 we actually refer to it as a manhole, but you have to bear in mind we're interrupting effectively three pipes. Yeah, right? well, it's true, and it's not the, like it's... There's, and, there's, and there's a process there, right? Because we, we have an existing tie that we're trying to unblind. The, it's all the blind tie, mm. unblind the tie. So we're going to create something over it, but there will be a point of interruption. One of the, the laterals feeds a restaurant, right? And that's important, yep. to, that's important to bear in mind, as well as a pair of dwellings, a commercial space. That's the lateral. Then the main that runs up and down School Street, we're going to have flow from whoever's upstream, for lack of a better term. There'll be a couple of houses probably that way. Okay. So make sure everyone's aware before yeah, it gets yeah, started. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yep. Okay. And, good heads and Rich, up. Rich plays a yep. key role in that as well. He's involved um, yeah. with Sarah Campbell, the engineer. Good. They've been working good. on that. And, so. I, and I know they do this every single day. Yep. But it's important to bear in mind the scope. It's not just putting right, it's a, not like a, a one cover house. on the ground. <laughs> right. It's not necessarily that easy. Mm -hmm. no. Right, we count that utility working until it backs up in your basement, and then you're mad as hell. Oh yes. So. Yep. And okay. then the only other thing I have is the recommendation for award to Northeast IT for the um, maintenance and support for mm -hmm. our IT for this fiscal year. You've gone through the contract process? Yep. Yes. And they may meet the appropriation? Savings. We have the appro appropriation in line, so Great. good to uh, go. We'll be changing our emails again. Here we go. <laughs> so do you need a vote of the board for that, or is that a contract that's part of the... Procurement. 
procurement. A move, yeah, a move to move to grant. It's an annual. Yes. And a move to grant uh, Northeast IT the annual for this year. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Two to zero, please. And you know we, twenty, almost twenty months ago, we were in a a a, a harried, flurried madness in this building <laughs> about. IT when it was all going yes. when it was yeah, all there. challenged <laughs> and, and it's taken that long to get to the point where you're not necessarily thinking about it day and night again um, and that's a good thing yeah. that goes through the both grant round that Jerry had worked on uh, the fact that the state had given some of those monies but more importantly the audit function of you know what we had for technology where we were at and what we actually wanted weren't over the rainbow they were just you know robust we're not looking for yeah exactly yeah, a lot. Know, we're, not, we're, not, we're not doing three D printing in the basement, <laughs> but either way, uh, it's nice to have this moving forward and having discussed a maintenance contract versus an implementation contract. Right, and especially as more stuff moves to either online, yep. like permits, the cloud. Great You've got to have robust backup and everything. And Northeast has the implementation um, contract for the grant for the IT grant Good. for the um, backup server, Good. antivirus, and a couple of other. Okay, um, that's things, good. So. Excellent. Yeah, we're moving forward. Glad to hear. It. Anything else? That's it. Almost the end of the year. Are we going to get an appointment list soon enough? Yes. Oh, yeah, it's that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. scratch it off tonight because we don't have them all yet. Yeah. But we're yeah. Yeah. It's coming. Um, and for those people who are interested in, in serving or are not interested in serving, you know, make sure to contact our office sooner rather than later so we don't have vacancies. Uh, and if you are interested in continuing, thank you for your, all you, you're doing for the town. Okay, Dave, any uh, Slackman's updates? Uh, so we have... Updates? We have a personnel committee meeting on the 18th, so we're a lot of emails going around about that, a lot of stuff we're looking at. So, um, and uh, we can I can mention how we were talking about uh, some other things looking at okay. that we that we were talking about. Um, and I was at a uh, we wrapped up last week the instructional assistance for Union mm -hmm. 38. That's all set, and I had to leave at the very end of a negotiation for the teachers for Unit 38. So, um, I so that was that was tonight. I haven't gotten an, okay. Hmm, interesting. I have not got a reply back. So okay. Yep. So, so that's still a work in progress. In progress, still. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I see that we have. Uh, South Main Street paved in time for the parade. I want to thank the highway department. Very nice. It was yeah. a nice, easy walk down South Main. Nice and smooth. And uh, pay attention uh, as uh, they get going with uh, some of the other uh, input and output repairs, and modifications uh, onto South Main, as well as line striping. Uh, and that's a good thing. I would suggest that if it gets a little quieter now around town as schools have wrapped up their seasons uh, that we uh, don't we don't lose sight of the fact that a whole other contingent of uh, people roll in and out of this town this time of year and they're called bicycles and there That's are a true. ton of them any given weekend so please if you're out there pay attention I know that sounds like A bit of a PSA, but when you see forty of them roll down River Road yeah, on a like Sunday, it's like yep, it pay was. attention. A lot of spandex, it's right? A lot of spandex. There. Yep. Exactly right. <laughs> okay. Other than that, I have no other updates. Uh, we continue to uh, work toward the permit through the permitting process of uh, 120 uh, North Main, and uh, that is uh, moving in the right direction. So uh, that said, FCAT, anything you want to add? No. Minutes. All right. All right. Minutes. minutes Sorry. Minutes. We got minutes of May 20 in front of us here. We we're talking about uh, North Silver Lane driveways, Riverside Park. Some minutes, some select board updates in that group. Uh, and there was a piece of homework in there about um, short term disability insurance, Tom had mentioned, uh, versus uh, sick bank. So if we can keep that in our summer, yeah. we can keep looking at that's, that. That's what I'm ready. adding to the personal <laughs> That was the piece. I totally get it. Look at that. Yep. Yeah. Okay, uh, motion to approve the minutes? Uh, motion. Second, all those in favor? Aye. Aye, two to zero, please. Okay.
Okay. All right. It was a good discussion with respect to permitting in the town um, and the fact that you have to be able to uh, keep your uh, trained professionals in the building's inspection business uh, interested in participating, in particular on the alternate side. And mm -hmm. again, I lose sight of that alternate side. That's true. Okay. Anything else? If not, I'll entertain a motion to go watch the Bruins. Uh, keep your sticks on the ice. Your sticks on the ice. And go Thank Bruins. You, Green. That's right. Uh, <laughs> motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Two to zero. If you can call us out at.